guys, good morning. It's January 28th, 2022, and I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and I thought it would be fun today to just kind of talk about what I do in my sewing room. So for the month of January, I've been sewing like crazy. I've been working on eight different quilts, and so I'm gonna show all of them to you, and then I'm gonna just give you some different inspirational ideas on how to piece more accurately and how to kind of think outside of what you're doing because several of them you'll see I might have an extra block I might have an extra size I might change the size I might change the color so when I'm in my sewing room I try to just kind of do my own thing and I had a lot of extra time in January somehow so I did a lot of extra stuff and these are the kind of things that I do when I have extra time and um, some of these are free patterns, some of them are paid, and a lot of them are other designers. So that's totally awesome to support everyone in the industry. So I'm gonna kind of start off with Brick House. So I know we've talked about this before, but every year at Fat Quarter Shop, we give you a free pattern and you can use the free pattern with the fabric collection, but the reason we came up with it was to use up your scraps from that year. So when you go back and look like three years later, you can say, oh, those are all the scraps from my quilt from 2019. I think that's the year we started it. So this is free. Just go to Fat Quarter Shop, type Brick House, one word, and it's a free pattern. You just download it. So I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on how I've been working with this block. So the first thing is, let's see. I keep all my notes in here. So what I do is as I'm making my blocks, I write down the collection name, the designer, and then I put a check mark. So you can see I've already sewn 10 blocks. Um, I'm only gonna show you three today though, but the reason why is I sew way in advance. So since I have, after this weekend, I'll have 11. So that means I only have five blocks left. So I'm thinking, am I gonna just make three extra blocks for the back? Because we're only in January and I'm almost, well, I am halfway done. So I need to figure out what I'm gonna do. Maybe I make two of these quilts. Maybe I do a fancy backing. Um, I'll have to figure out what I'm gonna do because I'm a little bit ahead this year. And on the instructions, we wrote out if you want to make the so for example if you wanted to make the entire quilt using one fabric collection you would follow the quilt column and that tells you exactly what you need to make the entire quilt but i'm making mine block by block so i follow the one block column that way if you're using scraps you just use this and um the, the ones that have the dash, that means that sashing or border. So um, we made it really easy for you to either do it as a scrap or as a quilt. And when I was working with this block, the layout is on page two. And I got tired of kind of flipping from page one to page two. So I just put some notes on sizes so that I can just refer to this. And to be honest, I kind of just look at this diagram and piece the block because I've made it already 11 or 10 times. So I don't need to go step by step. But I would say that anytime I start any kind of quilt, I make one block first to see if I like it. So I'm gonna show you the three for January. So this is a two and a half inch square. All of these are two and a half inch wide including the door. The only one that's not is the roof and that's three and a half inches wide. So after this, to, after I show you my blocks, I'm gonna kind of show you how I cut my fabrics and um, place them. Now, one thing I did wanna show you is you can make this roof one color or three colors. I think we wrote the pattern assuming you would keep it one color right there, but I made mine so that I could get more fabrics. So from this, you can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So you can use 20 fabrics, one background, 19 scraps. So the one thing that I did find is when I was working with these blocks, because I wanted to do one color per like um, sideboard or whatever you call that, 
some of the collections that I've used this year don't work because there's only like red, green, and white, and so the house would look funny. So it, this one isn't gonna work for every collection I use. This first block is One Fine Day by Bonnie and Camille. The second block is A Beautiful Day by Corey Yoder. And this is um, a block you can make after you finish the Heartfelt Charity Quilt. I did make most of my doors white and I did use whatever background I had from the collection for the top, for the background. And then this is Cookbook by Lori Holt. So I'll show them to you kind of next to each other. So let's see. So the one consistent thing I did is I did try to use white, like a medium print or a background print for the doors. But then as far as colors, you know, some will have dark roof, some will have red roof. It'll kind of depend which ones I have enough wide print for. And I'm just making it totally scrappy and totally fun. So it's a free PDF pattern. It's going to finish at 62 by 65. And the blocks finish at 12 and a half wide by 13 and a half tall. And I'm going to kind of show you one thing you can do if you want to trim it down. So again, 16 blocks, but of course you could take the setting and you could make it three by three instead of four by four. You could even do two by two for a table runner or table topper or you could do one row for a table runner. So anytime you see a, a quilt like this, you can totally make it your own. You don't have to make it 16. I obviously am gonna have enough to make probably 30. So I am gonna have to put houses on the back to make it um, use up all my scraps. So these are the first three and each month, what I'll be doing is showing you blocks as I show those collections. Um, this one, like I said, is from the Heartfelt Charity Quilt. Please donate to Make-A-Wish. This one is going to be left over from the cookbook sew along that I'm doing that you'll see in a little bit. And this one, I don't even remember what I sewed with this. I think I have this as scraps from 2021. So, and I didn't, I finished my 2021 scrap quilt a little bit earlier in the year, so I just used it here. But what I wanted to show you, I'm gonna first show you a pop-up. And the pop-up image is from my house. And this is kind of what I do, is I lay out what I'm going to be sewing, and then I look at it, see if I like the colors, the rows. You know, I wouldn't want that peach row to touch the red slash orange row. And if you notice at the bottom, there's a red on the left and two oranges kind of on the right. And the reason why is I just didn't have enough orange fabrics that were dark enough and I figured nobody's going to notice that. So I first lay them out, just make sure I have a scrap that's big enough. And then from there, I put it on a design board. So this is kind of how I transferred it from one to the other. So what I do there then, these two rulers have come in handy for this pattern and I think I wanted to use them because I didn't know they existed until the end of last year so it's a two and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler and a three and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler and so what I'm going to show you is when I'm looking here the way I cut is do we have a two and a half inch square ruler somewhere I'll show you this is my little top but these three are going to be my roof. So since they're my roof, they need to be three and a half inches wide. So since they're pretty, they're pretty um, skinny, I'm gonna kind of do them one at a time. So the first thing I do is I'm just gonna cut all of these three and a half inches wide put them on my board and then I'll come back and sub cut them a little bit later. But this will start to make sense in a second. These I barely have enough. This collection is Joyful Joyful by Stacey Itsu. 
and it's coming out in the end of the year. So these are three and a half because all my roofs are three and a half inches tall. I'll subcut these down later. My two and a half, just use a two and a half inch square ruler to cut that. And then the next row is gonna be two and a half instead of three and a half. So I'm just gonna stack these. I'll subcut them later. Put those, those are the next row. So this is kind of my making it really fast. It's just cut the, I guess, width or the length or whatever, two and a half, and then we'll come back later and subcut. I'm not gonna cut the whole thing, but this is kind of giving you an idea of how to start. And um, one question we got from Suzanne is, am I mixing collections in a block? I'm not, but you can do whatever, um, whatever you think looks good. I mean, if you have, if, oops, see that moved. If you're missing one um, color, just go in your scrap and get it. Okay, so I'm a little bit off there. So because I cut, okay, look, I cut a little short. I'm gonna show you what I do. It's a tiny, tiny, like a 36 of an inch short. So I'm gonna just put a little pin here. And then when I'm sewing, I'll do a scant, a scant quarter inch so that it works. This is also two and a half, the door. And you just have to think about the direction you want the door. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this here so you can see and then we're going to pop that image back up and I'm going to follow my image and put it all back together. So I kind of, yeah, like you'll just have to kind of guess what I'm doing, but I basically pull that back up on my phone and then I just put it back in the order I had it, which usually doesn't take very long because it's usually in the same order. And then let's see, it looks like this needs to go here. And of course it's scrappy, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to go back. It just saves me time having to think again. Okay, so we'll come back to here. And then what I do is just go back and subcut everything back down and then put it back on my, do my board and then sew it together. Very easy piecing. This is a great, great beginner quilt. It is so easy. One thing you can do if you want to complicate your life, because I like to complicate my life, you could cut all of these. I'll show you. It will work on all of the rows except this one. So this row has to piece, be pieced exactly like it's shown. If you want to get fancy, you can cut these two pieces a quarter inch wider. These two pieces a quarter inch wider these two pieces a quarter inch wider and these a quarter inch wider and taller this you can make it a quarter inch wider and taller and then you chop it down so you see how it's perfectly even I do funny stuff and make it bigger and chop it down right here this is the only seam that's going to touch and this one so there's only two two seams that touch which is why it's great for a beginner because you see these other seams don't touch. So what I did right here is I just pressed the top one open and then I just, um, I don't know why I did on that one. I must have been having a, must have not looked good. So I just pressed this one open and just make sure these are opposing. And when I ironed, this must have looked kind of funny, so I must have ironed it open. So you can see, um, I just pressed that open. So I'm gonna answer any questions you guys have on the brick house. Um, I could use the extra blocks for a table topper. And I am thinking of going, like at the end of the year, maybe making a full, like taking a collection and just making a quilt out of just one collection. So you can see how to take the free pattern and um, make it work within a collection. 
Could you start making smaller blocks and add them in creativity like corner squares? Oh, yeah, you could. So like right here, if you go to the top camera, you could turn these. These are two and a half inches square. And I am cutting little two and a half inch squares to from each of the collections left over. So I have some extra for sashing. You could make those using the square and a square pads that finish at two inches square and a square foundation paper pads and these could be square and a square um i but i think what i'm going to do is put some some i think on the back what i'm going to do is um probably something like this where i put background here or backing here and backing here and then four houses in the center with my label somewhere in there that's probably what i'll do so that i can stretch it to 20. Um, and then all of the fabric I've shown today is, oh, what kind of fabric is on the design board? So all of the fabric I'm sewing with is cotton. These are pre-made design boards by Lori Holt that I buy um, from Fat Quarter Shop, which is our company. I have some from the olden days that I used to make, but this is just 100% cotton. Um, Christine said she's writing in each of my doors of my brick house who the quilt went to so I don't lose the memory. Oh, that's a great idea. So what she's saying is right here, let's say she made the chicken salad sew along quilt. Then she can just put it here. That's a great idea. I don't know if I would trust my handwriting. As you can see, I have horrible handwriting. Um, I love the pattern. I don't think I will have enough to make a whole quilt. So I made a block and turned it into one of my project bags. I love it. Oh, that's a great idea. Maybe we should do that. That's a great idea. Um, it is taller. Yeah, that's a great idea. Should do that. Okay, so this is Brick House, completely free pattern from Fat Quarter Shop, our gift from the company to you. So this is one of eight. I'm gonna move to number two. So number two is the Quilting Life Block of the Month. And this, we're gonna stay on the top camera because this has a lot to it. <laughs> this is complicated. So. Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life puts together a free block of the month every year. So she started hers this year in January, and um, I'm going to do two different quilts. So to keep it less confusing, I'm going to talk about each quilt as if it's its own so we don't get confused. So we're going to talk about the first quilt I'm doing, because you see um, this is gonna be my first quilt, and then this is gonna be my notes for the second quilt, because I was bored that day and thought, oh, I need some more work to do. So the first thing I did is I'm using Flower Pot by Layla Boutique. And this is a manly collection, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use six different blues twice for the corner, the, what do you call it, churn dash. So if you look here, I went ahead and made all my extra churn dashes. So when I'm done with the block, because all the blocks are gonna finish here, all I have to do, see I've got them all lined up. So now I've saved myself time because when I make these, it's all the same step. And I'm gonna use six blues, so one, two, three, four, five, six, make them twice each, and then on the inside, I'm gonna use a like a taupey color or brown and a green. And when you make these, just use H100 triangle paper, which is um, triangles on a roll. Use this to make these. And when you do that, you can kill two birds with one stone because you make eight total half square triangles and then you sew them together. I am pressing toward the center here and away from the center here and away from the block. So if you look at my pressing, I'm pressing away because these are straight lines and it will make it easier and you won't have to press toward your block. This is the free January pattern. Um, and this is how it looks here. Another thing I did is 
I use the one inch by two inch flying geese paper to get these flying geese to look perfect. And this finishes at six and a half inches unfinished. So one of the things I want to show you today is just how I use different tools I have to get, one of the questions we get is how do you get the block so accurate and points so nice? I probably sewed this in like 30 minutes. But doing all this prep work right here is going to really help me because when she comes out with block two, block three, all I have to do is make the center and the outside is done. Now this collection has a blue dot that's similar to this. I can't remember if it's blue and white. I think it's blue and blue and cream, blue and cream. That's what I'm going to use for the border. And I don't know what her, um, I don't know what the finish, the setting looks like in terms of her layout of her blocks. Oops. But I'm just, you know, assuming that there's going to be a border. So you just print these out for free from a Quilting Life's blog. blog. And she does have, it's a quiltinglife.com, and she does have every month, she's going to share her block patterns in 12 inch and 6 inch. Everyone's going to have a churn dash border like we talked about. Their free patterns release monthly on the first Thursday of every month. And she's going to have a video on how to make that month's block. And if you want to make it, just go to her blog for the fabric requirements because that is all there and we want you to go to her blog. I did want to show you what I do is I make a lot of notes as I go. So some people ask, you know, how do you get, figure out the sizes? I just start making notes. So this is month one. So throughout 2022, I'll be showing you this. At the end, I'm going to give this to Kevin for Christmas and he won't know because he doesn't watch the show because if he does, he'll get in trouble. But I was kind of thinking how fun it would look in a small block. So I made it into a three inch block, which is insane. Obviously the, the smaller the block, the more, the smaller the block, the better your block will look if you press open. So obviously I didn't press open everywhere here. Some of the places I did, some of them I didn't. But if you're gonna go to a three inch block, you kind of have to press open. And when you press open, we're going to zoom in there. You can see that your points, I mean, these little seams kind of touch. It's crazy. So it's a lot of bulk. And you can see this kind of covers up that. that see, that's pressed open. And then that covers that seam up. So lots of um, bulk, I guess, because you've got seams on top of each other. So I thought this would be fun to make six of these. I'm only going to make six because I'm going to do a fun little tutorial. I found this little cube at Michael's and I'm going to just put the little blocks here. So I'll, I'll make six of these and then when I have in June or July, I guess July, I'll probably make a tutorial of how to put it in here. I'm literally just going to trim my little shavings off and just pop it in here and it'll be a fun little cube to put on my desk or you can decorate your house with it but I thought that would be really fun so um, I'm going to now tell you what I did to make this if you're brave enough and you want to try it and any of these press any of these cutting instructions are going to be on the videos they're not going to be on social media anywhere so you have to watch the video to find out what I did so the first thing I did is I use the half inch finish triangle paper for these. So that's the first thing I did. So, and then here you would make, um, let's see, I would cut these three quarter inches wide, put them together. I would cut this three quarter inches by two and seven eighths. Three quarter inches by two and three quarters. Sew them together. Trim it down to th three quarter by two and a half. So this finishes two and a half, and then this finishes at unfinished one inches. Now for in here, I 
cut this square one inch. You'll make these one by one and a half inches. So if, if the rectangle's one by one and a half, your corner squares are one inches. And then the center square is one and a half. Um, and then um, Barb is saying, wouldn't you trim the seam allowance a bit for the three inch block? Someone suggested that last week and or a couple weeks ago and I'd already made these blocks, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna leave them. I think they were saying like you could like trim them a little bit, um, but I don't really want to. I think it'll be fine. Plus it's just going in a cube. Um, so I think it'll be cute. So then what I'm doing is um, just making notes. I just have to write out blocks one through six. I hadn't decided there what I'm going to do. But if you have any questions, definitely you can ask me or you can go to Sherry McConnell's videos or her blog and post comments. She will leave the pattern free. So if you're looking for something that's free for the whole year, you can go back and there's a 2020 quilt and a 2021 quilt. And I sew them every year. So this year, this is Beyond Bella by Moda. And this is Flower Pop by Layla Boutique. And if you zoom in, I'm gonna zoom in and show you this um, Beyond Bella a little bit. And it's funny. So the Beyond Bella has little hashtags. And you can barely see it in the yellow. But these are so small that some of them you don't even see. That's how small the pieces are. So that's fun. So that's quilt two. So now we'll move to quilt three, which is the chicken salad sew along. Okay, so on this one, you wanna go back to last week's video and you'll know more, we talked in detail about the chicken salad sew along. It's an applique quilt. But Lori knows that I don't love applique. In fact, I hate it. That's a bad negative word, but I just really am scared of applique. So I love to piece. There's nothing I love more than to piece a quilt. So she is. She took the kit, which we now have back in stock. They will be shipping early next week. And um, she is going to, on her blog, give, um, give examples of what you could put in here for pieced. So the sew along starts Monday, February 14th on Lori Holt's blog, Be In My Bonnet, every Monday starting February 14th, she's gonna give you tips and pictures of the applique. At the same time, she's going to show you a block sewn out of one of these books, Farm Girl Vintage One and Farm Girl Vintage Two that um, you can put in here. And I will be showing them on my live stream every week. So um, I bought the kit and I'm gonna show you kind of what I did and what I'm doing so that you can get ahead if you wanna get ahead. If you're gonna sew this, and this applies whether you're gonna do the pieced version or the applique version, either way. So this, you download this free chicken salad sew along guide on Riley Blake's website or Lori's website, or if you buy the kit, we printed it for you and put it in there. So she has um, the dates, your fabric requirements. But then if you look over here, these are your, if you're gonna do the applique version, you need the So Simple Shapes Chicken Salad by Lori Holt also. But here, you can see that you're going to be putting your piece 12 and 12 inch finished blocks in here. Well, I can already go ahead and piece the border and start doing that. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that tonight. But what I wanted to do was show you what I did. I went and pulled each of the fabrics that are the, there's 21 on page three and four, and these are your cutting on page three and four, four. These pieces. Now, if it says, um, cut one square for Henrietta, that's a chicken, just ignore that for now. So I went color by color. Well, I guess I can go backwards. I can show you backwards, but I went color by color and went ahead and cut 
four big ones, four small ones. I cut fat quarter by fat quarter, and then I'm keeping them on the board for um, so I can get to them easily. Now this cutting is just kind of a direction to show you your width, but each of them are slightly different. Like some have more rectangles and some have more squares, but just follow it color by color. And then tonight what I'm gonna do, or actually today when I get home, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit one of my kids on the floor, I'm not joking, and they're gonna lay out this, 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 this. And then what I'm gonna do is sew as much of it as I can, and then I'll put alphabetties. I'll, I'll do an alphabetty and say, like this, let's see. I'll use alphabetties and I'll, um, this will be like row one, This will be row two. And then I'll probably do this three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then these little ones on the side, I'll probably consider those A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. I'll piece them together as much as I can and then put an alpha bitty with what it is. So in six months or whenever we're finished, um, let's see, it finishes in May. I'm not gonna remember what I did in January. So um, that's um, what I'm gonna do tonight. But I am gonna have a kid sit on the floor and lay it out. Now, they don't always do it exactly right, but um, they'll get close enough to where at least I don't have to sit on the floor for that long. And um, there is enough fabric to starch it. Um, so um, I did starch it, but if you're doing applique, I don't know if you should starch. I would ask someone else who knows about applique. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was this. So after I cut my fat quarters, these are just leftover pieces that I, um, so some of them I had more leftover, some I had less. Like this one I had less left over. I'm just going to keep these in a stack. And then when I'm totally done with the quilt, I'll cut these up and put them in my scrap bucket or um, use them on the backing or who knows what I'll do. We'll have to just see what I do. Um, oops. Oh, please don't mess that up. Oh, no, my OCD. No, 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 no. So pretty. See how pretty it is? I love it. Um, so, yeah, I'll keep this separate. Now, what I do in my book is... I'll show you. I can't show you everything in this, but I have some questions on um, this. So I'm going to show you a couple of these pages, but what I do is I put the quilt name, the designer, and like we put made for because a lot of people make quilts for other people, but like this, I'm just making it for a quilt along. Um, I put the date I started, the fabric collection, the size, if I know it, sometimes I don't know the size until the end, and then these are the two books that I'm going to use. And then I just bought the chicken salad quilt kit, so I don't have to write out any SKUs. And then I know there are 12 blocks, and I will write, as I do them with Lori, I'll write my block name, the book, and then I'll put a check mark of what it is, but we don't want to reveal early what, um, what it is like on flea market baskets, um, I just write out like, so for example, the flea market baskets we talked about last week and that's gonna be a sew along. Well, yesterday I had a couple hours and I stitched five blocks or sewed five blocks. So as I make a block, I, I mark it off. And again, I just put the name, you know, any kind of notes. Now here I put um, just any kind of notes. Um, my binding and backing is going to be different than the book. So I put any kind of skew notes here, any kind of notions, anything I use so that I can always go back to it and remember. And then here is um, just, I'm just gonna flip through a couple of them. And you'll see on some of these, I'm a little bit ahead of the sew alongs. And that's how I, um, I try to just do a lot all at once. I kinda don't sleep. I'm a little tired today. <laughs> I'm a little tired. Um, but this is like a video that we did. Um, but I try to keep as many notes as I can 
because I do so many things. You know, I, I forget a lot of things, a lot of details. And the reason why is right now, I'm currently making 17 quilts. This year, I've already completed five. I can't remember 17 quilts, 17 details, skews, all that. And so I have to keep notes for myself because if I don't, I'm not gonna remember what I did. So I just put as many notes as I can. So I hope that answers um, your question. And then I put a check mark here when I'm done, because when I come here on the weekends, why well, also, let me see my other, oh, I left it downstairs. My little, um, my, my to-do list, my to-do, I'll show that. Oh, there it is. So another thing I do, and this is like total over, over organization. It's here. This is what I need to do this weekend for quilting. This is what I need to do a cross stitch this weekend. Now that's not all gonna get done, but that's kind of my list of what I need to be working on and the order I need to go in. And then when it's done, I come to my planner and I mark off when it's done. So I, and there's even other places it is. I'm super organized, super, I have things too many places but this is the only way that I can keep it straight because I don't know anybody else who has to do this much all in one weekend. Um, but this is a way like, for example, the Pat Sloan and the Riley Blake challenge that I'm gonna show you in a little bit, I'm gonna try to do four blocks each so that I do four all at once because then that way it keeps me kind of all organized. I have all my fabric out and I try to be efficient. So this is kind of, I guess my life. So that is number three, I think. Number three. Okay, this next one is number four, right? Okay, we're moving to number four. This is Sweet Dreams by Pat Sloan. Can I see the finishing that's in two? So if you go to Pat Sloan's Facebook or website, which is I Love to Make Quilts, this is going to be her free sew along for 2022. In there, you will find fabric requirements and cutting directions for the layout. And then each week you get a block. All the details are on Pat Sloan's website. So I would definitely refer to her for any questions you have. I'm just having fun and I'm sewing along. So um, I have the first four done and these are all available on her site now. Um, I am only using four skews. This is block one. So block one looks like this. Just to show you what I do at home is I print them out. I put notes as I go on everything I'm doing. Throw out any papers I don't need. And this is how I color my blocks. So this is electric quilt. I draw the design out that she has and I drop my colors in and hope it works. Now you'll notice this fabric and this fabric are different because when I went to piece it, I thought, you know, this fabric will look better. So this is kind of my, um, how I start. And then I put just notes or whatever. So this is the block. And I'm going to give you some tips, but I'm going to also tell you what I'm using. I'm only using four fabrics. So this right here is 11763 denim. This is 11762 cayenne. This is 11769 cottage. And this is 11761 cloud. The collection is cookbook by Lori Holt and I just showed you that in another quilt, but I'm gonna have several quilts in the collection. Now I'll figure out binding and backing later, and I'm piecing with Arfil 2000. So when I was looking at this quilt, the first thing I noticed is these are three blocks, and they touch. So this is like when she gives you the blocks, this, they touch. So because of that, I don't want to have to have seams messing up. So I decided I'm gonna press these four open. 
And then that way on my even blocks, if my seams are open and my odd blocks are not, I don't have to worry if my seams touch. So if I show you block two real quick, when you flip them over, this is one, this is two, this is just pressed any which way, but two is open. Now it ends up that nothing touches, but I don't wanna have to worry about that when I'm in the moment sewing. So it's easier for me to just make a note in my book right here. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, press open. Because that way I'll remember. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some tips and I'm only gonna do it on these four blocks because it took forever. Um, and I'm not sure how interested you guys are in this. But I really wanted January to be kind of focused on how I'm organized, how I plan my life, how I just get stuff done, but also how do I get my blocks accurate. Now, you don't have to sew as accurately at home as I do. It doesn't matter. Do whatever works for you. I just have a lot of questions on this, so if I do one video where I show lots of tips, we'll always have some more to refer people. So I print my pattern, like I said, color it, and then to make it. I'll show you what I do. Okay, so this is instructions for a strip set, which is great. And that strip set is right here. Now, you see how big it is. Anytime there's a strip set, I cut it a quarter inch wider and trim it down. So here, these need to be, um, these squares need to finish I think at two inches. Yeah. So this is one and a half inches unfinished. So these need to finish at two inches. So I have, this says to cut it um, one by eight and a half. I don't, I don't think that's right. Let's see. Oh, okay. Rectangles two by one and a quarter. Okay. So she's saying to cut two by one and a quarter. So two by one and a quarter. So what I did is instead I cut one and a half inch strips by eight and a half because that way I save time. And to do that, I just sit, write my math out. And when you finish, this should be two inches, but it's not, it's two and a half because I cut bigger. So what I'll do is I'll trim it down. So I'll cut this using the center seam, one inch. Flip it, cut it two inches. Subcut these to two inches. And by doing it in strip sets instead of individual rectangles, I've sewn one long seam instead of four small seams. And you just cut them down like this. So whenever you're doing a strip set, just cut them a little bit wider trim down the sides and subcut it down. And anytime I can do this method, I always do. So again, I make it quarter inch wider here and a half to one inch wider here. And then that's gonna fit perfectly in there. And you're not gonna have any strings falling off because I just cut them. So that's one tip I have is to do strip sets here. And I would do strip sets anytime you can. Another thing I did is these are flying geese, and I love the Eleanor Burns flying geese ruler. So what I did here is I cut the blue square nine inches, my background seven and a half inches, and that is half inch wider than her ruler calls for. I used her ruler, let's see, the small flying geese ruler, did all the things and then cut it down. And then that's, um, well actually on this one, it's not the exact same size as the ruler. So what I do is um, trim the top of the flying geese and then just subcut it down to two and three quarters by five with, um, with the Creative Grids ruler. So I made, I used this ruler, 
right here, which is bigger, but what I do is trim this down right here to get your tip. Let's see. Trim this down at the top because then you know your diagonals go in the right way and then you trim it down. But that's what I do is I always make things as quick as I can. So those are the two things I did for block one. Block two I pressed open like we talked about. Um, let's see. So I did change this block a little bit. So this block originally doesn't have points right here. But I couldn't get my colors to look good. So you can see I just draw, I just drew some points and then said I added them and cut eight two inch squares. I just figured out what I needed to cut. So these are two inch squares. The half square triangle paper that I used here is H150. And I thought this was funny, so I thought I would show you. This is what I did at home. I put the fabrics the wrong sides, so I put them not together right. So that's obviously wrong. And once you do that, you can't really rip these seams out because I stitch with such a small seam, so this has to go in the trash. But I thought I would show you, this is the correct way you do half square triangles is fabrics right sides together. So don't do what I did because now I gotta throw that away. And then here for this, all I did is add two inch squares. And I had used, um, I actually used the seam align glue and this stuff is awesome. And I use it on some quilts and not others. If I need accuracy, I use this. If it's just a fun quilt that doesn't need to be totally accurate, I just don't use it. But you can see my glue stuck down, it's stuck. Um, so you would add a two inch square to one side, stitch, flip, add the other, and it will look like this. So that's just one thing that I did to add to it. And so feel free to any, anytime you can change a block. I'm sure designers don't mind, but I wanted this blue to stand out. And like I said, I'm only using four colors in the block. And I did use this clapper by Riley Blake to get these really flat. As I ironed and my seams were hot, I just placed it down. So that's block two. And then kind of what I do when I'm done, one thing I will do is I'll keep like the top sheet. So I know which one is block two and then I'll throw all the rest away because I don't need it anymore because I've already sewn the block so that I have um, like a reasonable amount of paper. And all of these, this is called Sweet Dreams, and all of these are named after her favorite desserts. Block three is a heart. So here's my heart. You could do um, one color, one color. You could do four colors this way. You could, you could do lots of stuff. Like you could do three blue prints, three red prints. You could do all red. You can really have fun with this block. And um, here, same thing, I colored it. Now you see this is the older print. That was what I was originally gonna use, but when I got to my sewing room, I got inspired by this fabric. So I change my mind all the time, and you should too. Don't feel like you need to um, conform. Now what I did here, these are cut two by five in her instructions. So what I did is I cut them two and a quarter by five and a quarter. And what I did is I would sew two of these together, trim this to what it should be. Add this one, trim it. Because you, you just want it to be, I think you'd cut it one and three quarters and you just trim as you go. And then you trim this, should be um, 12 and a half inches, no, nine and a half inches. And then you chop this down to five inches and then it's perfect. What I did is I pressed one row to one side, 
one row to the other. So you can see one goes down and one goes up. As I'm doing my blocks, I'm always using my design boards and you know taking it from on my design board to the to the table. What I did do here is I pressed one one direction and one the other. Since this is an even, I didn't have to press open. And I press these two different directions. These can go out and these can go two different directions. Now, when I cut this off down here, this is what came out. So that came out of that and that came out of that. So that was kind of, when I chopped it off, I had these, so I just sewed them together. This is what I chopped off. So you can see this is what I chopped off. And I thought, you know what, let me just sew those together. So I'll hold these and maybe I'll put them on the back or maybe I'll throw them away or who knows what I'll do. You could sew them together like this and you could make a smaller heart because, well, you could, um, you could make a smaller heart with them because it's basically the same thing reversed. So that's kind of cool. And the reason, so Jennifer's asking why I cut everything bigger. I just, I think I'm bored in my life. I think I need some excitement. So um, I just do it because I want it to be accurate, honestly. Um, and it's just fun. It, I love to cut. So any excuse I can do to cut, I, piecing, it's okay. The reason I get frustrated with piecing is because like, I can't hear my, my stuff I watch on TV. So I love to cut. Um, and in the journal, um, there you could put a little photo down here if you wanted to. Um, or you could put photos in the back, or you could just, let's see, there's a couple pages. No, nah, there's a couple pages in the back you could put photos. So that's number three. And then number four is the same thing. First, I see, oh, half square triangles. What size? So this is H300. So the first thing I do is if there's ever half square triangles, figure out the paper you need. Here, the same thing. I'm gonna make strip sets. So this calls for one and a half by three and a half inch rectangles. So three and a half times four is like 13 and a half or so. So I cut this 15. It says one and a half. I cut it one and three quarters. So when I'm looking, I cut, so this to this. Now I'm gonna trim this a quarter inch. After I trim that, add this, and then you can use a um, Creative Grids three and a half inch square ruler and just put it on there and just cut them. So that's a way, so that's number four. And same thing here. Just put your fabrics on there, cut on your lines, and press. So super, super easy. And this one is an even number, so I pressed open. And here again is like my drawings, my notes, my... So that's number four. I think it's number four. So now we'll move, so that is Sweet Dreams by Pat Sloan. We'll move to Sew Along 5. This is called RBD Block Challenge 2022. Riley Blake does is hosting a free Sew Along right now. They just started it in January. They release three blocks a month. You get a block every Tuesday for the first three Tuesdays of the month. It started January 4th and it will end in May. You go to Riley Blake blog to find the patterns, which is just RileyBlakeDesigns.com. And then um, these are your instructions for block one. This one is, and they're each by a different Riley Blake designer. So there are going, I just have written to block nine. I'm not sure how many blocks there really are. I think there's more. But I'm, these are 10 inches finished. So here's my first block. 
So since it's Riley Blake, I wanted to use Riley Blake fabric. But since I had used Lori Holt's cookbook twice, I thought, you know, um, let me find a, a group that has pinks and aquas because, you know, I love pinks and aquas. So this collection is new. It's called Quilt Fair by Tasha Noel. And what I did is I just picked a couple of fabrics. My blocks, I'm going to use 11358 navy. My pink is 11351 pink. My red is 11354 red. And my aqua is 11352 aqua. My background is going to be um, 11354 pink. Now later in the sew along, there is going to be some um, different blocks that connect them. And I'm going to use um, 11354 aqua on that and 11357 aqua on that. So I had fun making this. Uh, I decided to press open because there were so many scenes. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is so cute. So I made a little one. Because, you know, everyone needs a little friend. So I don't know if I'm going to make all of them. I don't know if I'm going to make the whole quilt in this size. I think I will, just for fun. Because, you know, I don't know. I thought it was fun. So um, what I did here is if you want to make the five inch block, anything they have written cut one and three quarters, you would cut one and an eighth. And anything they have you cut three inches, you cut one and three quarter. Now that took me a long time to figure out my math and my math is this is this is literally how I do it. I sit at a spreadsheet like a dork and I write down, okay, this is how they came up with the math. It needs to finish at um, five and a half. So then I figure that out. Anyway, I mean, you're not gonna understand any of this, but this is how I literally sit at a computer and figure out, that's how I figured out that anything you cut one and three quarters, you cut one and an eighth and anything three inches, you cut one and three quarters because I did the math to figure it out. And I'm crazy. But I just, I love this fabric and I thought, oh my gosh, it's so cute. So with the small blocks, I might not put it in the same exact setting as the large blocks, vice versa. I'm gonna probably make two different things and I don't know if I'm gonna make all of them this size. We'll kind of just see how it goes, I guess. But it was fun. Um, you do lose, this is one thing Lori was talking to me about, is, you know, you do lose, like, these are little sewing machines. So you, you lose that. You know, you're going to lose that in this small block. And I did fussy cut this center by um, centering a creative grids ruler on top so that it would look, you know, I wouldn't lose that design. So that's Daisy Chain by Lori Holt. The next one was Harder. It was Sweetheart by Beverly McCullough. And again, just crazy notes. I just keep a lot of notes. And I use, the first thing I do when I'm figuring something out is what triangle paper do I use? So this smaller one is H100. The bigger one is H150. When I made this, I made strip sets and trimmed it down. I pressed everything open and then use the clapper. Now this one, I do want you to notice, it's a little bit of a mess. I really kind of had a hard time getting my seams flat on this one. And you can see that's kind of bumpy. So I think that'll quilt out. What I did here, if you want to make the small version, which finishes at five, this is 10 inches, this is five inches. These are H050 triangles. These you would make, um, you would make them with, um, you'd make them bigger and trim them to one and a quarter. So use uh, maybe one, one and a half inch paper and trim it down. This is a one inch square. This right here is one and a half by three and a half. And since this is one and a half by three and a half, these are one and a half inch squares. These two rectangles are seven eighths by two. 
these red are one and a quarter by two. These squares right here are seven eighths, and these squares are one and a quarter. So if you wanna make it, that's how you make it. And I kinda just sit, the same thing, I just make a lot of notes. So that is block two. And then block three is by Krista Lee. And this one was easy. When I got to this one, I was like, yay, except I did hit a snag. So here it is, normal, 10 inches, pressed open. And then I wanted to make the five inch. So when I made the five inch, it's not as easy to come up with the math here. Well, I guess I have it the wrong way because this is not a traditional, you know, something I can convert. So the first time I made this, my little stem was really fat like this, which that's way too fat for this tiny block. So I had to adjust it. So, you know, I just kind of kept it to show you. Um, if you want to make this in a five inch block, anything you cut two and a half, you're gonna cut one and a half. Anything cut four and a half, you're gonna cut two and a half. And anything four inches, you cut two and a quarter. So that's how I got to all of this. So super cute. I think you're gonna love the uh, setting. I think the setting is really nice. So when they come out with that, I think um, you're gonna like that. So that is sew along number four, five. So we got three more. And all of this I did recently. And one thing I did do here is I used a half square triangle paper here to make this one, but I only made one. So the other one, I just used the other one to, for this and then trimmed it down. So that's the way you can do that. Okay, this is number six. And this is also a free one that came out this month. So, and I can't show you a photo and I can't because the reason why is it's not out yet. She has to show it next week. This is called Winter Walk in the Woods. It's a free quilt along it's hosted by Joanna Figueroa on her blog, and it's designed by her and Susan Vaughn. And on this one, I am using 9900 color 200 for the background, and then I'm using a Riley Blake fabric 715 silver for um, the darker piece. There are five weeks, there's actually six weeks, but the last week is next week. So I'm gonna kinda talk through what I did. So she said these are gonna be trees. And I'm assuming when we put them together, they'll probably look like this, you know, cause they're trees. And the way she wrote the pattern is she wrote it where you use a lot of different, like five or six backgrounds. And I just didn't wanna do that because I had this fabric already. I think I, um, I think I just had a lot of it or I bought some, I can't remember. It was a month ago. So um, this one, you're gonna make 20 flying geese, and um, I just used the large flying geese ruler by Quilt in a Day to do it. And then what she asks you to do is to label them by background, but I don't have to because I use one background. And this one's completely free also. So this is week two. Week one is instructions, so I'm gonna leave that there. And then you can see, this is how I bring it into work. All these design boards, this is how Everything comes to work. Everything is a design board, and I'm a design board freak. And then week three is to make stars, and there's nine different ones. This took a long time. And then I just labeled them with my alphabeties. This one, the alphabet fell off, because I saw it this morning in my bucket, and I was like, where, my, where does that go to? So it's obviously number two. Now, on this, there was a couple things I would do differently. I would have pressed this, if I had to go back and redo it, these would be pressed open, all of them. And I think this is the last one I made. So when I got to this one, I was already like, oh, I need to be pressing open because it's just too much bulk. It's too much. It just really, I don't like the way the front looks. I feel like it just didn't iron very well. So this is week two. And my tip for you on this is when you make the hourglass units, Whatever they call for in any pattern, cut it a quarter inch to a half inch bigger. 
and that way you have a lot of room to trim down. And I use my Creative Grid Square rulers to trim those down. So that's week two, or week three. The next week, she said these are gonna be tree trunks. So you make one large strip set and then cut it down. So, and then I just numbered them because I guess you're going to need that in the next step. And then I'm assuming it's going to kind of, well, maybe, oh, I guess it would probably go that way. I'm assuming it's going to be a tree trunk because that's what she said. That was, and then I made some other blocks, which the next week they get sewn into something else. So I'll show you that in a second. I did this yesterday. So that's, I kind of keep them organized. And then week five, and some of these have a printable handout, some of them don't, just follow her blog. And if you have any questions, um, I'm sure that, oh, they have a Facebook group and Susan will answer your questions. So on this next one, you needed to make 28 of these little sashing things. So I used, of course, my square and a square paper because I, this is my least favorite block to make is the square and a square. And then you sew them into, I guess I'll move this. You sew them into rows. So I did this yesterday. And my piecing on this quilt is not great. So these are, I guess, oh, let's see, it says top and bottom border and then the two smaller ones. It says It says left and right border. Oh no. This is top and bottom and this is the side. I mean, I'll just look at it when I get it. But basically, these are the stars from week four and then this is week five. So I'm hoping that next week she releases the final pattern and then I'll bring it in and show you how mine looks. And um, in my book, so like I didn't put the quilt size because I don't know the finishing, I don't know the size. And then what if I change my border? like? I guess I can't because it's this, but you know, sometimes you make your outer border wider or skinnier or, you know, and so I just have to do week five. So this is another free one that's out there. So I always like to sew along with designers, especially when there's free content out there. And um, she has uh, used one dark fabric and then lots of lights. And then I just, the one thing I changed was I just used one light. So that's number six, so only two left. Okay, so this is, this is why design boards exist, right here. So this is called branching out. I'm gonna kinda not confuse you all too much. So this is on the Moda blog, and the pattern is out now, and it's free. The full pattern, the full setting. Um, like for example here, I put my layout is to be determined, my size is to be determined. That just tells me, hey, Kimberly, you looked at it, you couldn't decide, decide later. And on the background of my blocks, I am using 2041212. And it's kind of a white cream, it's a creamy, it's a, I can't remember what collection it's from, but it's from Fig Tree. And then there are two sizes that they give you. You can either make six and a half inch finished or eight inch finished. And I decided I'm gonna do the six and a half inch finished, but it's tricky because six and a half inch finished is actually seven inches unfinished, which don't get confused when you start trimming your blocks. And I'm gonna show you kind of how I planned this project, how I'm gonna implement this project throughout the year and how I kind of used, um, just try to make it different in my own way. And this uses scraps. Now I am going to admit, I did buy some stuff on Etsy. So each block, each block, what I did is I made one side, one color, and the other side different. And then for each fabrics, I make two blocks at a time. No more than two, because I get too confused with too many pieces. So I make one where they're on different sides. So this is two of the blocks. 
like I said, this is 2041222. This fabric is from the Stitched Collection by um, Joanna, and I don't have a lot of brown, so I decided to keep the same skew. It's 2043717. Now, I did make some mistakes making this because I needed, um, I want this to be up straight up, and then I did some where the words were upside down. So on that, um, I have to be careful on that. And these I just pressed kind of towards the dark. Um, these two have to go a different way. So if you press these to the inside, you press these to the outside, to the white. So there's two of the blocks. So I think I have 12 so far, but I'm going to kind of show you what I'm doing and some, some tips at the end. So again, left, right. And I'll talk about kind of how my organization, I just wanted to show you my blocks first. And each month, I'll just show you different blocks. Maybe I'll show you a couple each week. Maybe I'll show you a bunch at the end of the month. Kind of depends how I end up sewing them. I did try to do um, two colors that were slightly different and that have some bit of a contrast. This one's pretty busy, this uh, zigzag. And then you can see this is a much older fabric. This is... I don't know how many years old, but it's pretty old. But you see, I just try to contrast. And then on the last two, I've trimmed this one down. But I want to show you, this is how I make my block. And I keep notes. This is um, just some notes. I have a sheet at home with more notes than this, but that way, each time I go back, I'll know what to do. So the first thing, I'm going to kind of backtrack a little bit. I think I got a little ahead of myself. The first thing I did is I thought through the smallest size they call for is 61 blocks. So I thought, well, if I have 61 blocks, I need 61 greens. If I want to be OCD and totally, you know, plan, 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 because I think, well, I know why I do that. I do that because I have four children and I that have no control over my life. And so when I'm quilting, you will see that I do a lot of exactness and a lot of trying to make it perfect. And that's because this in my quilting room, it is the only place in my life that I have control. I have four children and um, at, at all times, at least one is sassy. So, and I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of sassy. So that I think as I've gotten older, I've gotten a little bit more kind of nuts with doing things a certain way and that is I mean I could be a psychologist that is why that's also why I watch true crime because I really like to know like the psychology of why people do different things but what I ended up landing on is if I have a layer cake from my stash and I cut four strips they're called for one and a half Yeah, and I did cut them one and a half. I just need four strips. And these four strips, they're about one and a half by 10. Some of these were cut from layer cakes. You can see this is a layer cake and you can tell because it's got the, the zigzag on the edge. But like this one, you can tell is from a fat quarter or scraps because you see the salvage. But this one, I'm gonna have to be really careful because I only have three and a half. That means that's all I could find in my stash. So I just have to be careful. So the first thing I did was try to get at least 61 greens, cut them into strips. So I've got, and this is um, as many stems as I could make. I don't think I have 61, but I have um, a start on it. I'm probably gonna have to buy them when it comes out. That was just my stash. And then when I'm pulling, I just pull two that are different. Like I wouldn't put these two together because there's no contrast there. So when I'm making my blocks, I do try to have a contrast. So I have two boards. This is one. These are my leftover backgrounds. And these are my, this is all I have left over when I cut and finish this block. So you don't have very much left. So my goal is when I'm done is have this. Now, I don't know what I'll do with these at the end. I might 
do something for the back. I might throw it away. Who knows? Those are my leftovers if I need it. So there's one. And then this is the second one. And this one I haven't touched much. And again, OCD. There's 10 in each pile. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 60 something. Because these were 10 at one time. So I probably have enough to make 70, 60, 70, something like that. But this took hours. I can't tell you how many hours it took me, but I had so much fun doing it. Um, it's so fun. And I just pulled, what I did is I pulled from my stash. I went through every fig tree fat quarter bundle I had, every fig tree layer cake, every fig tree block of the month I bought from her that I never finished. And I starched what I needed. My son Peyton helped me and then just cut them down and hopefully I can use all of these. And it's going to be awesome because it's going to be a scrappy quilt. I did go on Etsy and buy some really, really old um, fig tree layer cakes to have some green. And that was kind of ridiculous. But, I, you know, that's what I wanted. So I want to show you the difference between my before and my after. So what I do to make this is I cut these squares three and a quarter and I cut this square three and a half which is bigger than called for so it comes out bigger I cut all of the backgrounds a quarter inch wider I leave all of these fabrics the green and the brown exactly like the instructions are and then this should already be straight so this is, uh, needs to be seven inches, not six and a half, because six and a half is finished, add half an inch to seven inches. So I'm just gonna trim these sides just to get anything off. Make it straight, turn it around, put it on the seven inches, and this is my waist. So hopefully you can have some fun with the branching out. Um, but because as I was kind of doing it, we're gonna get to quilt eight because I spent a lot of time finding all of these greens. I mean, that was a lot of work. So I thought, oh, I should do another green quilt. And I had kind of thought about this in one of the members only lives last year. So this is on one board. And then I have another board. I probably have 30 boards going at any time. But as I was cutting those, I cut some two and a half inch squares, printed the mini charming Christmas pattern. It's a free pattern at Fat Quarter Shop. And um, I have all the squares. So I have enough squares for the outside, the inside, and I, I had some extra time. So I already made my half square triangles. All I have to do now is sew it together. Literally, like when I have like two hours, because it'll probably take me two hours, I will um, just sit and sew this. Now, what I will do to make this even, to make this come out accurately, is all of these right here, these four, I will make, a, I will sew, I will cut a quarter inch wider. Here, 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 here. You can't hear. I will cut this a quarter inch wider and a quarter inch longer. And then I can take a 14 and a half inch square ruler from Creative Grids, which I need to write down to take home. So I need a CGR 14. I hope there is one. And then I add my borders and it's going to all come out. So two quilts in one. And I decided I'm just going to use that same background fabric. So that is eight quilts, one month. Oh, I'm tired if you look at me. And then... We're having a sew down challenge and this is something we started two years ago and we decided to bring it back for 2022 so starting in january i started with a brand new cone of color 2000 because that's the color i use and this is what a brand new cone of artha looks like this is how much i've sewn that is a ton of thread I'm gonna be done with this cone pretty soon. <laughs> Two years ago, it took me all the way to the end of September to sew that much, but um, yeah. So there's that. So I would love for you guys 
to start putting your questions in. I'm going to take a tiny break, come back and answer all the questions and show you lots of new stuff. I'm back. Yay. So uh, thanks guys. Uh, going forward in 2022, I probably won't go into as much detail. Um, if I do, it will be more sewing tutorial based where I can show you. But that was just a way to kind of start off the year, tell you how I do things. So you can always go back to refer to it. But I'm um, going forward. I'm just going to show you my blocks. Um, and then I'm going to answer any questions you have. Uh, any word on the Cupid box? I don't want to miss it. The fabric is delayed and it might come out after Valentine's Day. So um, we're going to call it Cupid box runs late or something like that. So yeah, stinks to high heaven, but whatever. Um, my nail polish color, I don't know. I had to go a different place. Um, so I just picked something random. Um, if I use multiple colors, is that okay for sew down? Yeah, you can do whatever you want on Sew Down. What size flying geese paper for the heartfelt quilt is needed? Um, email nova at fatquartershop.com. Do I sew at the studio when live stream is over? No, I definitely don't. I, um, I sew at home. I mean, I sew here on videos, but that's it. If I buy the chicken salad templates, can I do the sew along with stash fabrics? Yes. Yes, you can, and you just get the pattern at Riley Blake. It's a website. I know you told us, but what is your go-to white with white print? 20708-36. It is a random dot um, from, we're getting more in March. When creating a smaller block than the pattern is giving you, can you use the original size pieces and make them half the size? No, not exactly. You have to account for the seam allowance, which is, um, it just takes, you got to be really experienced to do it. Um, you can also like trial and error is kind of how I learned. I would love to know more about electric quilt and how to use it in my advantage as Kimberly does. So it's, um, you can buy it. It's just 
Google Electric Quilt. They sell it uh, direct to customers, and it's just a digital program. A lot of customers say that it's, um, like, if you know how to use InDesign or something like that, that would be better, but it's more for quilters. So, um, and I do think they have some videos on their website. What is the best way to clean a design board? So, I don't know. I, um, I don't ever clean them. I just pick them off, I guess. I don't really know. I had one. I've only thrown one away um, ever, and I've been using them forever. I only threw one away, and um, it, like, kind of bent up. It, like, something fell on it in the car, and I was like, oh, yeah, this one can go. Okay, so this next question we might need help answering. If I washed my white and red fabric and it turned pink, is there anything to do? I found a bug with the fabric, so I've started to wash some fabric. Should I wash all my fabrics? So if you have already quilted and sewn with the red fabric, just don't dry it yet. Use a color catcher. I think you can use vinegar. I would kind of Google that or go in Kimberly Stitch Squad and ask for advice because I know there's been some posts in Kimberly Stitch Squad group on Facebook on how to do that. If I was starching fabric and it turned if it bled, I would just throw the fabric away and not use it. Um, I starch everything before I make a quilt. I don't pre-wash. If you want to do the chicken salad quilt and don't want to wait for the 108, how many yards do I need? I'll tell you right now. Um, let me see. Ninety plus ninety divided by thirty-six is Denise. Ninety plus ninety divided by thirty-six. Oh, 180 divided by thirty-six. Nine, eight times sixty. No, one sixty. No, one eighty. Divided by thirty-six. Five yards. And on the back of mine, there's a really let me see the um let me see my uh chicken salad fabric. I'm going to show you two prints that I love and I'm going to use them on the back of both my quilts. I'm going to use one on one quilt and one on the other. I already decided because they're so pretty. Let's see. This one. So we'll do the top camera. This one. And this one. So these two. I love these. So these are going to be so the quilts probably um, put this one on the Pat Sloan sew along, and then I'll probably put this one on the chicken salad sew along. Or I might use the 108 if it comes in in time. 108 is made um, in a different country, so sometimes it takes longer. But this was fun to cut all this. I loved cutting it. It took me, it took me a couple hours. Maybe, maybe, I don't know how long it took. It took a while. Um, Faye says, Kimberly, you are a really great interviewer. I hope you will do more of them. There are a lot of designers I would love to see interview. Yes, we have that uh, planned. Yes. If you use starch and no steam, do you then spray mist water when pressing? Where does the water mist step come in? So I don't use uh, water mist. What I do is starch my fabric to, be, to start. That pre-shrinks everything, and then I just use steam. I guess if you were going to not use steam, you could just spray it. The Heartfelt Sew Along starts next Friday. That's a great question. You will come here Friday. We're going to do a live tutorial. All you need to do is take your quilt kit and starch everything. So what I have done is I've starched everything, and my background piece I starched in one piece because it is... Um, uh, it's big and it's not so big that I can't starch it. So just starch everything and come here for a tutorial. Texas Cello Geek says, have you ever used photocopy portraits in your quilts? I think they'd be cute on the brick house. That would be cute. We do have something planned doing that uh, for Mother's Day. The quilt behind me, I was gonna talk about in a little bit. It is a Jolly Bar kit using the, the um, it's called Blueberry Buckle Quilt Kit. It is the pattern that's in the cookbook Jolly Bar, so that's the only place you can get it, and um, we're the only ones that sell it. So that is called Blueberry Buckle Quilt Kit. What stitch length did I use for Brick House? Uh, 1.5, 1.7, something like that. 
can I do fat eighth bundles of Lori Holt fabric lines? Uh, currently we can't due to um, just, we just can't right now. But in the future, if we are doing better in terms of cutting our cutting department, yes. But right now, no. Do the block lock rulers and clearly perfect slotted trimmers do the same thing? I don't think so. I've never used the perfect slotted rulers, but the block lock, they have like a bump in them. So when you slide your fabric, it stops. So when you cut around it, it kind of stays in place. But I don't have um, information on the other one. Do I starch my backing? When I am doing good in life, yes, which means if I have time, yes. Sometimes I don't have time, so it really honestly depends on that. On some of the Bella solids, they have PFD. I discovered that meant prepared for dyeing. Can you explain that better, and can you just use that in your piecing? I accidentally bought a bolt. Okay, so per PFD is only in one color. And it just means that if you're like an art quilter and you want to dye it, you can. I use that, that bolt is used by most people just normally as a normal bolt. There's, um, I can't remember what color it is, but it's just a, I just use it like normal. Does Lori start, starch her fabric for scrappy baskets or any other? No, she absolutely does not starch. She absolutely does not use steam. But if she has a little like um, wrinkle or something, she uses a tiny bit of Best Press and just sprays it. And I don't know what scent she uses because I know that's probably the next question. I'll have to look next time I go to her house, which is soon. Um, have I ever made my own starch to starch my fabric? No, I haven't. Um, I've heard that some people do. Um, yeah. And what is a good baby quilt pattern for flannel? Maybe layer cake lemonade. That's really cute. And it's got a lot of big pieces. That would be a good one. Um, so now I'm going to show you one more sew along. And it wasn't pieced by me. It was pieced by one of our staffers. Her name is Kenna. And it's awesome. So I want to show you this also because this is another sew along for 2022. So Jaybird Quilts has a pattern called Night Sky. It came out a couple of years ago. And she has a sidekick ruler that creates um, the stars by using a ruler so you don't have to use foundation paper. So she's hosting a sew along, so you'll wanna check out Jaybird Quilts. And um, I wanna show you the blocks. They look so good. So what um, Kenna is doing is she is using the Seashore Drive Fat Quarter Bundle by Sherry and Chelsea. She's using the pattern, of course, and the ruler, and her piecing is so good. So she's piecing just like me, using starch, and I'm, I know that because I can tell, and um, she's pressing everything open. And then when she puts these together, she'll just um, um, line up her seams. And she has a very short, let's zoom in to see, her short, her stitch length is very short, just like mine. And it looks like she's using um, like a white thread. But see, that's a tiny seam. And if you're pressing open, you really need a tiny seam so your seams don't come apart. So that is her first block. And Jaybird has some tips on her blog and her social media on how to make these come out pretty. But this looks really pretty and see the look you get. It's a great way to, anytime you're looking at a pattern, just because it has a black background. Like for example, you might think, oh, I don't like black, but I like navy. Okay, that's great, but you can also just do white. Um, so um, this is a fun one. This one's, um, I would say for more advanced, but this is coming out really pretty. I think this quilt's gonna be beautiful. So we'll show this to you throughout um, the sew along as she is sewing along and when she finishes. I did wanna let you guys know the cookbook charm pack. Our first shipment, um, the 18 wheeler got lost, which means who knows what happened to it. Maybe it was in a fire, I don't know. But basically we as a store didn't get our cookbook charm packs. We got them late because um, they got lost, so we now have those. And then I thought a lot of you guys might like this. Um, 
Art Gallery just this week came out with some bundles. There's six of them. I'm going to show them to you um, on the side too. But they came out with six colorways in both fat quarter bundles and half yard bundles. This is crystallizing, blossoming, sprouting, hibernating, summering, and harvesting. And then this is how they look. They're so pretty. So you could do something really fun with this. You could um, you could do the night sky with this. It would look really pretty. And if you use this, you could use either a black or a white background. So these are the pure solids by Art Gallery. They are now packaging them into fat quarter bundles, half yard bundles, and hopefully um, they will stay and hopefully there's something that they can keep um, making over and over. And then the last new item that I thought to show you was this new collection called Effie's Woods. It's a Deb Strain collection and it's super cute for a baby. So we, we do, and there's a panel. There are a lot of questions on the live stream every week on um, questions for baby. So here you go. Um, so guys, um, I also have some new quilt kits to show you. So we're gonna pop up the first one. And this is called Granita Quilt Kit. There's also a cross stitch that goes with this. And, oh, pop that back up. So what we're gonna do is show you the full quilt so that you can see it in its beauty and then show you the blocks up close here and the quilting so, so you can see kind of ours. So this is called Granita. The fabric is Crystal Lane by Bunny Hill Designs. And this is an It's So Emma pattern. And there is also a cross stitch pattern separately that mirrors it. The next quilt is called Blue Smoke. It is, sorry, so I just threw the quilt. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Um, I meant to put it at the edge of the table and it fell off, sorry. So this is called Blue Smoke. The fabric is Sister Bay by Three Sisters. And this is an It's So Emma design. And the fabric is, again, Sister Bay by Three Sisters, Moda Fabrics. And I love this quilting, it's amazing. And all of this quilting is Gina Tell of Thread Graffiti. The next one is behind me, so we don't need to grab it. It's called Blueberry Buckle. That is the cookbook collection, which I showed you two quilts in. So you can see that collection really kind of lends itself to all kinds of designs. And it's got so many colors that it really is pretty. And um, this is a Jolly Bar kit. So it only comes in the Jolly Bar. The pattern only comes in the Jolly Bar or the kit. The next one is called Forget Me Knots. This is also a Jolly Bar. So a Jolly Bar is a five by 10 inch pre-cut that can only be found at Fat Quarter Shop. In it, there are free patterns and we also offer kits on all of them. So this is Forget Me Knots. The collection is Love Note by Layla Boutique. And I love this collection. So that's that one. The next one is called Mini Charm Chiffon. This is a free pattern. So this is a shortcut quilt. A shortcut quilt is a free video, a free pattern and several size options. So anytime you want a free, say you're doing something on the weekend, you've got some fabric, you need something to sew, go to the Fat Quarter Shop YouTube channel, go to the shortcut quilt section, and those are all pre-cut friendly quilts. So um, this fabric collection is Love Lily by April Rosenthal. And that's the front and the back. And guys, that's it, that's a wrap. Um, I've had so much fun with you today. Um, I'll see you next Friday. Get all your fabric starch for the Heartfelt Charity. Make a donation to Make-A-Wish and we will start sewing next Friday. See you then, bye. Thank you.